Why does a Christian do good works? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Today we have Dallas Bruder, who's from Boy Burley here, right? Yes, sir. And we appreciate him coming and sharing his story. Uh, are you from this area? Were you born here? Actually, uh, yeah, I'm a 1960 model. Um, <laughs> I was uh, born here in Burley, um, raised around this area for most of my life. I lived uh, off and on in the state of Idaho, but a uh, large portion of my life has been right That's in this right. area. A beautiful country here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that Snake River going through, that is so gorgeous. It's, it's a life vein of this country. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it is, that irrigation and stuff, so yeah. Well, I guess it would be, yeah. yeah. And is it flowing north or is it flowing south? Actually, it is flowing back to the west. Back to the west? Yeah. Uh, and eventually into the Columbia River. Mm, yes, guess, sir. Right? Yes, yeah. sir. Well, it's just beautiful here. So, yeah. so you've had a great life, and you high school and all your whole school. Yeah, actually, and... most of my schooling was around here. Then uh, um, I ended up in Nampa. I uh, graduated from high school over, over in, in Nampa, oh, and okay. so, and then in 1981, <clears throat> I came back to this area again, and uh, have been, been here, here since. since. Yeah. So. Now, were your folks uh, members of the church? They were. Yeah. They were. Um, Actually, my dad, he, uh, he was quite involved. As a matter of fact, they were both married in the temple, no different than... Uh, now, it was in the Logan Temple at yes. that time, wasn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Because yeah, yeah. there weren't too many in that In that around. given time, that yeah. would have been back in, uh, in 59 was when they had got married. And mm -hmm. then um, that, was, that was the life we, we lived, um, that, that family. He got where, baptized, I guess, at age eight? And... I, yes, sir, I did. Had no <laughs> idea what I had got baptized into. Actually, uh, I knew I would got baptized into the church and somehow felt or was understood that that was where my salvation was based. Oh, well, sure. And Brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah. About the, did yeah. You? Um, had a brother and a sister. Okay. And um, actually, in 1969, um, my folks went through a divorce, oh. and uh, I was super close, close to uh, both my parents. But uh, in that, somewhat, my world uh, fell apart, not understanding what happens to a uh, Mormon kid when yeah. their parents divorce, because, okay, mom's eternity is based on what dad does. Oh, that's some, true. That's right. And so just that... Uh, insecurity, that fear of what, what does my life look like now, um, always feeling like um, my, I was inadequate in, in my salvation. That's probably a good value because I was inadequate and I still am. So, <laughs> we, but we didn't know that as Mormons, nope, did we? No, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't we, the, the vision was always, well, if I could work enough, if I could do enough somehow, yeah. It would outweigh the balance, and we would come out on the winning end, which is a lie. And Jesus would pick up the rest. The, the rest of that the statement always: yeah. Yeah. You, "You do your best, and, and Christ will do the rest." Yeah. Uh, wrong, wrong information. Christ did it all. Receive it. Yeah. So after high school, uh, what happens in life? Actually, uh, after high school, I, I got saved back in 1974. After my folks had. Uh, I went through the divorce. I ended up um, going to live with my dad. Matter of fact, I was living like a wild man. Um, I uh, even just 14, doing the youthful things, huh? <laughs> probably to the extreme. Oh. Um, I was still um, hanging around with some of my LDS friends and stuff like that. At that time, my mom was single. I was living with her, and uh, at that time. <clears throat> As you said, useful, youthful <laughs> things. Um, I figured out pretty quick at that time that drunk people can't count, and so helping myself to the refrigerator as the adults were moving around um, became pretty easy. And uh, just going in that downward spiral of knowing and feeling because of my background that God was waiting there just to... Um, put his big thumb on me in judgment <laughs> in, a, in a 
because I was so inadequate. In 1974, I was living with my dad. Uh, my mom had sent me to live with him because of my lifestyle. I was just going crazy. But he could control you a little better. Yeah, or yeah, a little better handle on it. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, I went and lived with him, and uh, I came home on Easter Sunday for Easter weekend uh, to visit my mom. And as I was visiting with her, um, her pastor was here. She had come to Saving Knowledge of Jesus Christ, and her pastor was here. And as we were visiting, he, uh, he came to me, he asked me, he says, Would you like to get saved, Alice? And I had no idea of what that meant. What that like. meant? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what are you referring to? Now, he knew you were Mormon, I guess. Yeah, he or, did. Yeah. He did. He knew the background that we were coming from. Of course, from. your mom was. Now, your mom had been LDS, and then she Come to obviously the had been LDS, yeah. and then she came to Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Praise God. And so, as, <clears throat> excuse me, sure. as we did that, um, she, uh, he asked me if I wanted to get saved, and, and <laughs> to be quite honest, my response was somewhat like, well, it's too cold to go fishing, we might as well try this. <laughs> But, so you really didn't know what it meant completely. No, but I knew that I was stepping out in faith. And uh, had you regretted your lifestyle then? I guess at that to that point. Oh, and, I, I I knew there was judgment. I knew that there was. Um, yeah. I knew that everything that I was doing didn't line up, and the fact was, as 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 I sat there and we prayed and I asked Christ in my life for the first time in my life, I felt absolutely clean. I knew my sin had been forgiven. I couldn't tell you the what spirit the spirit washed you clean. Oh huh? my word. Uh, probably the easiest way to explain it. It would be it felt like somebody had reached down inside of me and took every wretched, every mm -hmm. terrible thing I'd ever done and completely removed it. And, and I sat there and I was just overwhelmed. I couldn't explain to you what happened, but I knew it happened. Wow. As a matter of fact, even today, I still reflect upon that time because it gives us hope. I know that Christ came in, entered in, as the Word speaks. Yeah. That he comes and enters in and takes up residence, that residency inside of us. So. And so Amen. Were you, what happened after that? I mean, did you start going to church oh, or did you? Well, as Romans 8, chapter 1 says, it says, there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. I went and uh, of course that weekend was over with visiting with my mom. I went back and I lived in the same, went back to the same exact house. My dad had remarried. There was uh, stepbrothers and sisters. There was half brothers and sisters. Um, there, there was perversion of every sort. I went oh, back yeah. in that life. Yeah. Because I didn't understand how do I change this? How, but God's faithful. He was constantly drawing me, and, and <laughs> through those years, He just He kept. As, as, there was even times where I thought, man, I don't like to feel that separation from God. I thought, man, I'd rather feel not, not close or never felt that closeness than to feel the separation. Wow. And then in uh, 1982. Um, I'd, I'd go to church for a while, and, and, and I'd spend time in fellowship. As a matter of fact, part of the reason that we are drawn to the ministries that we are is an understanding that I found in those times. I would have dreamed to have somebody come in beside me and, and disciple me. This is what walking with Jesus looks like, 101. And this was happened in 1982, you yeah, say? Yeah, 84, actually. 80, well, yeah. Yeah. And, or 82, excuse me. And uh, anyhow, I kept, I kept pressing in in that time. And then in 82, I asked the Lord, I just rededicated my life. I says, he just spoke to my heart in the church service one day. Are you ready to give it up? <laughs> and uh, I went to the altar. I prayed. I says, Lord, you take this wretched life. I know, I know that you love me. I know that your grace is sufficient. But you take this life and you do with it what you will. And at that time, I rededicated my life. And, uh, That's really a, a momentous thing to do, isn't it? When you just say, wow. okay, it's not me. It's not about me. It's all about you. Do with me what you will. I mean, that's a great faith step. Oh, it, it, it? It, how many ways can the word put it? I, I mean, um, actually through that, I, I've identified so many scriptures. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going. Please, <laughs> knock, knock them out. <laughs> uh, 
The first one would be uh, Matthew 6.33, where he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's, it's putting him first. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And it says, In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Corinthians puts it this way. He says, your life is not your own. It was bought with a price yeah. where Christ went to the cross of Calvary. And the fact of the matter is, is there, I, there's countless more verses that speak of that very thing. Now, did you ever understand that at all as a Mormon? I, I had no idea. It was all works-based. It was all about if I'm good enough. As a matter of yeah. fact, I still have conversations. A number of my family are LDS, and we still have conversations as we talk about it. The conversation. Do they understand it at all? Not or? at all. Yeah. It always comes down to that same thing. I hope I've done enough. And the fact of the matter is, is if you're believing, or if you're standing there thinking, I hope I've done enough, you, you haven't. Have, but you, exactly. can, you can never do enough. Exactly. Right? It, he done it all when he went to the cross. We're just recipients of his grace. Yeah. yeah. So why does a Christian do good works? Because he done it all for us. Because when he went to the cross at Calvary, he didn't have to do it. I love what the Word of God says back in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, 2. It says there, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seat, seated at the right hand of the throne of God, you know what that joy was? He had a relationship with me. As he paid for my sins, it was so we could have a relationship. That's how much he loved me. Yeah. I am nothing but a recipient, and I'm telling you what, because I'm a recipient, I want to bring glory to him. And the reason I'm sitting right here right now is because I want people to understand that there is a, a life that is full and complete, and it isn't about bondage to works. It's not about a bondage to anything except yeah. for a life surrendered to Christ. And we know, and I certainly know from my experiences in the church, that there's an, any number of young men and young women who go through that period of time when it may be lost, right. but there's hope in Jesus if oh. they'll turn to Him and, and not carry the guilt that Mormonism throws on you for not doing all the right things or for falling short, which we all do, but we don't understand. We we just take that guilt upon us as Mormons, as as people who are in a legalistic system. Amen. But once you turn your life to Jesus, it's just such freedom, isn't there? Exactly. Exactly. Now you've said something earlier before. I think we started something about you're not saved in your sins from your sins. <laughs> Say that quote again. Actually. Um, there, there's a lie almost in the day of that I'm not saved in my sin, I'm saved from my sin. Yeah. Um, as it says in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, it says, What shall we say then? It says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because we have all this unlimited grace, should we continue in yeah. sin? And then Paul answers himself. He says, God forbid. He says, How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? Yeah. We're dead to sin, but the only way we can be dead to sin is be alive in Christ, receiving what He did for us on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. And His righteousness. His righteousness. Yeah, not ours. Exactly. Ours. Yeah, I love that. Well, you've turned your life to Christ, and it's been quite a while now, yeah. and you've, you've started several ministries, and I'd like to spend some time on that because I think they're important to you, but they also give hope to everybody that, that there is uh, life after Mormonism, there's life after sin, a sin life, you know, yeah. that you can turn. So tell us some, some of the things you're involved in. Actually back uh, for about uh, somewhere between 15 and 17 years now, um, we've been involved with uh, a jail ministry where we go in and teach through the Word of God. Um, <laughs> the fact is, is, is uh, the Word says, it says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God that need not be ashamed, rightly delighting the Word of Truth. And so in that, taking and picking your Bible up, the fact of the matter is, as we live in a day and age, 
As a matter of fact, I'm, I just want to share a short story where my heart was just broke today. Um, here in the area that we live in, there was some Gideons that were packing out, passing out Bibles. And uh, the, the school's coming against them, the county's coming against them because oh. of that. And um, what, what a sad thing that we would be uh, judged for giving hope, <laughs> but coming it's back no again. Bibles, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, um, so do you give, do you teach lessons then, or do yes. you just counsel one-on-one, or do you just, are you allowed to go on Sundays only, or do you go through the week? Uh, which, which? Um, D, all the above, on, okay. on where we counsel out. Matter of fact, uh, there's, there's a big encompassing of, of what the Lord's called us to do, um, the single thread being those in bondage to sin is reality. But the fact is, is, um, about uh, three years ago, we uh, we started back into the jail. We ended up with a year or two where we didn't, but we'd been going for a uh, total of about 15 years. And what we did was um, we go in um, and we just teach the Word of God, understand, or teaching salvation through Christ alone, as the Word speaks, uh, and bring that to a point. But then as the Lord, as we were involved with that, we were involved with a different addiction ministry at one time, and, and the Lord had, had brought us in a different direction. As a matter of fact, the Word, or what we do now is what we call pure Word, which is just studying through the Bible, taken, mm-hmm. and as it says in James one twenty two, it says, but be doers of the Word, not hearers only. It says deceiving your own self. Mm-hmm. It's taking the Word, hearing it, reading it, and applying it. What's it look like wearing it? And uh, so anyhow, as a matter of fact, uh, in this very room we're sitting in here right now, on Thursday nights, we do what we call Pure Word. We have anywhere from uh, 12 to uh, 17, 18 people. A large portion of them are those that we've been able to minister to from the jail. Because um, the fact of the matter is, I think if anything we lack at this time is discipleship. And... uh, that's just uh, walking with Jesus one This is a way to help fellowship them and yeah. encourage them. Encourage them. And you do this to earn your way to heaven, right? <laughs> no, no I, I, I do this because Christ paid it all for me. And uh, this carcass doesn't belong to me anyhow. It's his. That's right. And uh, the fact is, is, is uh, I'm just going to put what it. What a joyful message, though, oh. to be able to share. You're also helping ladies who come through difficult times. Yes, sir. Um, Tell us about that. About a year and a half ago, um, my wife had been involved with a uh, home in Boise that was called uh, the uh, Chrysalis House. Chrysalis, that's yeah. the... Yeah, the when, metamorphosis. When the from, metamorphosis. From, exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that transformation. Makes sense. And, yeah. and the home that we have is not a halfway house. Um, the problem is... is, is uh, well, here we go again. Another scripture. Imagine that. Romans chapter. Uh, I'm impressed because I, I read them. I just can't remember. Oh, them. <laughs> that's by God's grace. I, pro- I can't remember names to save my soul. But scriptures. But no. the Lord allows me to remember his word. But <clears throat> it's, it says there, it says, um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and to God, which is a reasonable service. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed mm-hmm. by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Understanding that uh, as, as we deal with these people coming out of prison, a lot of times they have no idea how to live any other lifestyle. How to deal with exactly. real life, yeah. Exactly. And what greater manual to give them to live life than the manual about life, and that's the Bible. I guess and, you've had some wonderful stories of oh, people yeah. that have transformed. Well, and Exactly right. Um, we've, we've seen a number, and uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, as the Lord spoke to us 15 to 17 years ago about stepping into this ministry, as a matter of fact, this came about with one of the guys at work came to me one day, and he says, Okay, Dallas. He goes, I know what you guys do. I know you go into jail. I know that you do those things. He says, I was watching a show the other day, and they said that it's only like 1% of these people that truly get it. 
And he says, what do you got to say about that? And I'll tell you what it came down to is if only one. <laughs> well, if only one soul is changed. Well, God if, said that to you, didn't he, about the worth exactly of Exactly right. What did he say? He says, if, you know, if I was the only one, I would die for you. Yeah, and the worth of a soul is great. Exactly, yeah. all that, that yeah. covered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's a soul worth? Yeah, what's a soul worth? Exactly right. Um, as we stepped out in ministry and these things, and it's, it's because I'm saved, not to be saved. It's because exactly. I just rejoice in what the Lord's done for me. And that's such a, a, a fantastic message to, to be able to, I mean, just a twist of a little bit of, Mormons just don't look at it that way. They don't. They think they're earning their way, and you're doing it because you've been saved, and then you serve, and love God, and love fellow man. And, and the other side of that is, I could never even give the slightest portion back to what He's given me, day in and day out. Well, like you said, he, it's your body. Everything is God's. Exactly right. And you owe everything back. Well, and, what did Romans say? It says I, that you present your body a yeah. living sacrifice. Yeah. It belongs to him. And you said something David said, too, uh, earlier. What was that about? Let me find her back on that. Oh, what would it matter to give that something that didn't cost me? <laughs> it didn't cost I mean, what kind of an offering is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, here, I'm going to give you something that cost me nothing. It didn't yeah. matter to me. It was just... Yeah. You mentioned uh, to me, too, uh, one of the things that m Mormons most misunderstand about Christians and, and the fact that, do you recall what you were saying about that, men's rules and uh, how they live? It's completely based um, on, my salvation is not based on what I do. My salvation is based upon what he did for me. Totally fantastic. <laughs> it's, I, I don't run around in this desperation and this fear of that, that wrong, that dumb thing that I do. Because the Bible says, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, is uh, last time I checked, I'm still in that boat. Yeah. But I absolutely love it that when we come to Christ, we end up with that grace card. And there's an unlimited balance on it. It says paid in full. Yeah. And as I go before the throne of grace and go, Lord, man, I was so wrong. I, I, forgive me. Not only forgive me, Lord God, but I can't even change this in my own strength. I need your grace. I need your power. I need your spirit. But doesn't that just give you such confidence? And I can be at peace. Trust, uh, be at peace. And the freedom that there is in that. Exactly. It's, it's I'm not joyful. free. And there's such joy in that. Exactly. Yeah. Have you been able to share this with message with your family? Oh, at times. <laughs> you try? <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> actually, I have had a lot of opportunity. One of the fears that they all run into that we've seen at times is um, somehow that their salvation is based in belonging to the church. And the fact of the matter is, as I went and I've sent my paperwork in to be removed from their uh, from the records. their records and stuff like that, and um, that that has been that information gets passed on. Sure. And the fact of the matter is, though, is um, my salvation is not based in a church, and I would dare anybody to <laughs> prove that to me through the Word. Yeah. Jesus put it this way in John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man comes to the Father except by me. It has nothing to do with the church that you're at. Yeah, you need to be in a fellowship that teaches what the Word of God speaks. But look at what the Word says. It's always based upon a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, here's reality, is if I could reach salvation by my own. Why did Christ die? Why did we even need to have him come if we can do it ourselves? Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. He did it all. Why didn't I understand that <laughs> for so many years? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and I think you even mentioned you didn't, as a youth, you didn't even feel that God loved you. I felt that all it was was this, this constant 
set of rules and regulations yeah. and that you, if you would hopefully get enough done right that somehow it was based upon that. When I found the liberty in Jesus Christ, a matter of fact, the word says it this way in Galatians 5.1, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Oh, what a joyous message that <laughs> is. I've got to reread my Galatians so I can tell that. <laughs> but it, it is, it's just a, a wonderful message. And, you know, I, I was in that bondage for so long. I have such a heart. And I'm sure you have a heart. That's why you're doing this and why you do your ministries, to, to reach out to people, and whether they're Mormon or whatever religion they are. They need Jesus. Exactly right. And a matter of fact, as you, as you have said, Earl, I wrestled back and forth on whether I thought, man, everybody's probably heard the same thing a hundred times off from this. And I thought, you know something? This being no different than any other ministry the Lord's called us to, yeah. if only one. Yeah. If there's one that sits there and looks up and goes, I've been that's there. That's me. I've been there. Yeah. That's me. That speaks to my heart. Really, there's liberty in Christ. I don't have to do. It's not about rules, regulations. It's not about being affiliated with certain things. It's not about working your way up through. I just always have that picture of Jesus standing there and and when in front of God, and He's saying, "He's with me." You know, isn't that a neat, a neat thing to think? Actually, you bring that up to your. Uh, here in a few weeks, we're going to do a uh, skit just about that very thing. Really? Exactly right. Matter of fact, uh, believe it or not, it's their ladies from the transitional home. And they're doing it? Yeah, they are. They're good for them. And, and um, yeah, as a matter of fact, they're, they're going to be doing it. it. It's a powerful message about yeah. the accuser coming, and he points to this individual and that desperation and fear, and Jesus steps in that place and he goes, she belongs to me. She belongs. Wow, what a great message. Amen. Amen. Well, we've got just a, a couple of minutes. So anything you want to say to your family and friends? And... Love Jesus, hate sin. Yeah. Let him do the change inside you. I love what the Word says back in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God commandeth his love towards us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners. Exactly right. He's not standing there waiting for us to clean up. Trying to clean ourselves with our own strength is like taking a bath without no soap. <laughs> the blood of Jesus is a cleaning agent that yeah. purifies us and makes us come holy. And I guess you'd recommend people go to the Bible. Oh You've all boy. quoted it so often, and uh, but study the Word. Study it out. Yet it'll never lead you astray. And the other side of that is find somebody to disciple you. Yeah, find a good fellowship. Exactly. And that's, find, again, freedom to go and search and find a place that you feel comfortable. Preaches, teaches, work. Yeah. Exactly. Dallas, thanks so much for sharing your story. I think it will really touch some hearts, and I appreciate it. So we'll pray that way. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs> <laughs>